Okay, we are live. Dan Scala, great to have you. We're in a class, but we aren't going to show the class. Uh, <clears throat> and we are in uh, Columbus, North Carolina. Uh, thanks for joining the class. Uh, my privilege. My pleasure. My pleasure. Excellent. So one of the things I want to talk about <clears throat> is the idea of multi-payoff versus multitasking. So Dan, what we're doing right now is we're talking about entrepreneurship in the class today. What does it take to move from salary day job to being fully self-employed and the inner and outer game of success on it? And one, one of the things people love to be seduced by is what I call multitasking. And every ounce of evidence is most homo sapiens are terrible at multitasking. Agreed. <clears throat> And what I believe, right? And so what I believe in is what are called multi-payoff. So right now, what we're doing is I brought you on into the classroom. So we're getting the payoff of you staying in Raleigh and not having to travel four and a half hours to come here. There's one. <clears throat> then we're broadcasting this live in a way it can be recorded so we could use it for something else if we want to. Very Secondary cool. payoff. You know, cool. three, you and I have a course on this. So this gives more content we can use to supplement the course if it works off. Excellent. That's three payoffs. Can oh, you yes. think of any others? Uh, yeah. that, well, the, uh, the class well, participants well, audience there the get to see, you know, see Cliff and Bill through our, our trials and tribulations of what it took us to get So we'll be very open so, on very open on uh, a part part of the good parts and, and, and uh, good parts and, and uh, yeah. absolutely and dan with this since we don't have the headset you have to make sure you face the microphone when you talk okay. <clears throat> so we'll that's get good. it okay. that's good yes, so that's it so that right yes, the it. class is getting it as well Excellent. so dan i want you to uh, uh, tell a little bit you moved from a day job with a family and responsibilities where you showed up and you could work as many hours you want in the day job and they were going to pay you the same salary. Is that right? Okay. When you got to, right? Yes. To out yes. of work, family to feed, and the jobs were not available like they had been before. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Computer manufacturing yeah. had moved yeah. offshore. Computer manufacturing. So there was offshore. no way that I could stay in no, town no and do what I did. I could stay in town and do what I did. But I had a family in Raleigh, so we had but to. I had a family in Raleigh, so we had to. And you hit the ground, and you were motivated by that. That's right. Yeah, I yeah I had. Uh, That's right. Yeah, I, yeah, I had, had uh, four kids. We had one big yeah, house payment, had, three car payments, two college tuitions, car payments, got all the bills, bills that were all the bills taken that care of were, with my corporate salary. Yeah, and, with my corporate salary and. When they cut me loose, I had like 12 weeks of salary. I had 12 weeks of salary. I had 12 weeks of and, and And so I created small. And, and, and so well, I created small. Here we go. So basically, we go. You, had, you had 12 weeks of funding, right? Exactly. There was a crowd of funding system. Exactly. You, yeah. you had 12 yeah. weeks of funding, yeah. and then you're out. So you had to make, right. so you had to look at what's, what is the return on investment of you as a product very aggressively and quickly, didn't you? Yes, absolutely. Well, what I, yes, what I actually did first off was well, what I, what I, I had started off, what I, small company I started before. Small company I knew before. how much work was involved. So what I did I first of all was I tried so to go buy a company. I found one to buy, but we didn't come to terms. one to buy, but we didn't come to terms about half of my time. With that, uh, half of my time, I'm down, down to seven. So I just had to go out and do it. So I just had to go out and do it. Or figure it out. So you, you had a business before, and you were looking at it. It didn't work out, so you had to figure out. But one of the things you said so valuable that I think people don't get is how much sweat equity and work it takes to get money. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. In the beginning to build it up. Yeah, you know? absolutely. They, they somehow have got some romantic idea of if it'll just flow in and how much it really takes work 
Now yeah. you can hit the main veins where yeah. it starts traveling, but usually that's after uh, a lot of sweat. In fact, there's a Steve Winwood uh, album he came out with, and they said, "When's your next one? Uh, are you going to come out the within a year?" And he said, uh, "He said it only took me 20 years to get this first one out, so I'm ready to go." You know, <laughs> <An> <laughs> to overnight, be an overnight success. An overnight, yeah. overnight success. Yeah. 20 years to be an overnight yeah. success. So I think that's that's one of the things I think is important that you bring up. And the other thing is. I'm of the advocate anyone can do this if they're willing to be uncomfortable enough. That's my view. Now, yeah. some people, you're born for yeah. it or not. But, you know, you had the motivation drive. <clears throat> and to me, though, most, <clears throat> if they have enough money to be comfortable, that's to me the kiss of death in entrepreneurship. Yes. Because they aren't leaning into their yeah. game enough to be playing hard enough to make it a serious business. Right. And that's what, what uh, right. and, and we've even talked about it with friends and stuff where you're not leaning into your game enough. And I talked about how a lot of sharp entrepreneurs become pretty self-destructive if they don't stay in a winning zone yes. or at least failing, getting up and trying again. Yes. Absolutely. So then you Absolutely. got, you got uh, from there, you went on and what were you doing? You were getting, what was the first business you did? Actually, the first business Actually, I did was business I did uh, was consulting, uh, like consulting, a consulting service, uh, like a consulting service. service. Right when I was in corporate America, right when I was in corporate America, facility manager in our company, facility manager in our company. So my my advisor, the guy my, that my advisor, the guy that was leading, was giving me ideas and suggestions, leading, helping me. Giving me ideas and suggestions, helping me. Dan, listen, nobody's going to hire you at your salary. Dan, listen, nobody's going to hire you at your salary. Six figures back then. And that's what I need to replace that. But what that is, is he said there are smaller companies that are smaller companies for you for one day a week. You reach out to them and offer your services for eight hours retainer. Eight hours retainer. One fifth of what you were making. One fifth of what you were making. That's a great idea. So I went to the library got the names of all these companies. So Dan, yeah. we're, Dan, Dan, we're dropping off. So let me restate what you're saying so people can oh, hear it because you keep ahead. waving in and oh, out. Oh, we need your it. headset because your head I moves. It. I hear you. <laughs> so I hear you. Uh, basically, I just want to restate the thing. It's really interesting. He said, no one's going to hire you for the income you need to take care of your family. Yes. And then what you came up with yes. is, what about they all hire me for one fifth? Yes. And you get five different businesses yes. and you go and show up providing those services, which you yes. figured out they need the services, but they weren't really to, willing to pay the price full yes. time to do. So you realize yes. there was still the need. It's just they were downsizing and and weren't willing to spend the money. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Basically, yeah. and just yeah. put some numbers around. Let's just say it's a hundred k. Numbers around. Let's just say it's a hundred k. So what I was yeah. doing, putting myself out of these so companies. What I was doing, putting myself out of these companies. Twenty k, and you've got a resource. You got a ten year person. You got to do projects for. You. If you hired a full time engineer, it costs you forty thousand. So you get a full time professional, seasoned professional, complete the seasoned professional for the price. And so I, so within. So, I, so within, I didn't get five of them. Five of them. Within six weeks, I got three. Six so that weeks, was six I got three. three. So that was six so I was, three. I was getting there. So I, was, I just I figured out in my head that I needed to buy in. Black times. Black uh, times. Uh, and and uh, different different factors. I just and, I need, different need factors. Know. I just. So, I did, I did that uh, business consulting. I did that uh, business consulting out of it. Then I opened another company. Then I opened another company. Forty percent more, and then I opened forty percent more, venture. and then I opened guys and, and got another hundred percent. So I was able to double another hundred percent. So I was able to double my money double in eighteen money months. In but quite honestly, months. it wasn't because but I was quite, smart. It was because, it was because I was smart. Because hard. Because I worked. Hard. At least a hundred hours a week. hours a week. I, I want to add. I, we gonna have to stop at times to repeat what you say because I know you. I can hear it. And uh, I want to go over it. So several things uh, is is let's not underestimate relentlessness over brains. 
Absolutely. And you and I know the Absolutely. person who will whack away at it is going to have 10 times more chance than the person who will overanalyze it and not execute. Yes. That's, that's, and that's the other right. thing that, that's, that's so important that's, that's, is the concept of are you asking, can it be done, or are you asking, what does it take to make it happen? You see, exactly. you were asking, exactly. what does it take to make it happen? Exactly. And you weren't accepting, can it be done? And yes. the people who don't succeed yes. are the ones that hope and wish, and they focus <laughs> on, yep. can be yep. done. You know, to the point you've done your homework and you're launching. You're setting a finite period of time. You're going to do it. And then you only ask one question. What does it take to make it happen? That's, and that's, yeah. that's why people, people that's, you know, yeah. to me, I love the but Minister Fuller quote. He said, okay. the, um, the reasonable okay. man adapts himself to his environment. The unreasonable man adapts his environment to him. All progress is due to the unreasonable man. It's the ability to say, what does it take to make it happen? Now, it doesn't mean you throw ethics and morals out the window, and you did yeah. not. And we know we've talked about this a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> but most are asking the wrong question to start with. They're mm -hmm. not going to succeed because they mm -hmm. aren't willing to ask, what does it take? And, and people always say to me, well, if I hire you as a coach, how fast can I move? And my question is, how uncomfortable are you willing to be? Because mm -hmm. that's where change occurs, mm -hmm. and it's discomfortable and has a cost to it. Now, you, the love of your family and caring, that was kind of an easy decision in some ways, wasn't it? it was what does it take? Problem. I got to make it, it happen. Failure isn't an option. So in some ways, your situation was quite simple <laughs> in that you had to make it work. But then you had to do some serious soul searching and go, what's the, what can this engine make the most money the fastest way, right? Yes. That's what we talk about in the class is the yes. return on investment of you. And most haven't gotten serious and answered that question. Where mm -hmm. do I give the highest return on mm -hmm. investment? <clears throat> you know? Yeah. And, and your, yours was, yeah. I can study manufacturer and I can solve problems faster there that will make them more money and save the money than somebody else. Right? At the time. Yep. Yep. And so I, I just want to footnote, that's one of – the the other core things that we want to bring up you did in this journey and the next one is the idea of multiple streams of income now you have to manage all these so you want to make sure they're strong enough but if you guys heard what what dan said is i didn't get all five but i got three and they started coming up with other ways that would make up the difference is that correct dan yeah that's right in fact yeah, that's dan, right there's a uh fact, when I down the road of, a, a year down the road, the road also for entrepreneur development, also for entrepreneur development, gave me a great perspective on this. Gave about me a great what perspective on this. About he says when you're working for one person or one group, you're a for one person or one group, you're a In other words, I was providing my service to. Uh, In other words, I was providing my service to. Uh, for uh, for a fee, and so I was a for, con. For a fee, and so I was a con. So he said, "You are." You are not in business. So said, you, you, are, business. you are not in business. You have five clients. And what do you mean? Five clients. To be a viable business owner, to be a viable to owner, have five clients because if one drops, clients because if one drops, you don't have eighty percent of your income stream. So you don't have eighty percent of your income stream. So you are. He showed it to me that way. So I went from contractor to. to me that way. So I went from contractor to. And then the third step was I had three. And then the third step was I had three. taking on the third company, and so to me, taking on the third company, and so multiple streams of income set up. That's when multiple streams of income set up. That's or because you have multiple streams. Or because you so have multiple streams. Guidelines to me that he'll put it in the to me for me. I still today believe that there's a lot of. I still today believe that there's a lot of. Yeah, great. So I want to repeat it because it was hard, a little hard to hear. Okay. <laughs> so the key things was okay. he said when you just have one. When you're working for one, you're just a contract employee, basically. Yes. Until yeah. you've got five, now you have some buffer. So if one goes away, you have other income. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. And the other thing that you didn't yes. bring up that to me is also critical in entrepreneurship is finding a mentor. And you you really did find someone you admired that had the skills you needed to develop to work with along the way. Would you mention that briefly and then I'll repeat it? Uh, you mean about the mentor? Mentorship. I mean about the mentor. Yep. Yeah. Uh, 
I knew yeah. I knew uh, I had the I knew I knew I had the passion, the patience and persistence. Patience and persistence. things, but I knew that I, if I didn't have somebody I knew that I if I didn't have to to benchmark me or guide me or benchmark me or go guide me stronger this way or to guide me this way was, I was I'd run off in all kind of directions. So that's why I, in all kind of directions. So that's why I, uh, relied on having a good strong relied on having a good strong to, to help me and they to, to help help me. Me. so and they and me. To so and I wouldn't I would not advise yeah, anybody I would, I would not advise anybody for a business unless it's something you totally business, think, unless, unless it's something you totally think about know. and you know your market you can go after and you know uh, your market you can go after anybody uh, to go and uh, go go forth to go and go, go, go forth go behind you it's looking over your show, providing some guidance, providing some guidance, and also some accountability when you're getting off track. Also some accountability when you're getting off track for me. So I want to repeat what you said. So the mentor provided, you got a mentor that to to you was filling in the areas you knew your weekend that you needed to learn. Is that right? Yeah. So he, and he also he, it created some so accountability he, for you, right? Absolutely. I knew, I knew ultimately the account the, the, ultimately the account in the bank account being able to pay the bills. My ultimate goal. At the same time, how to make that happen? How to make that happen? I was out there willing to run every day. Run every day. Make sure I was running the right direction. And the mentor, uh, I'm not sure that that was happening. Uh, I'm not sure that that was happening. Excellent. <clears throat> And you, you had, you've had several mentors along the way, haven't you? And now you've offered it to people too. Absolutely. In the crowdfunding Absolutely. world. Absolutely. Yes. So I think that's another yes. one is I call it, are you willing to allow people to contribute to you? And that's to me a, an a often thing that a lot of people cloaked under being noble aren't willing to allow others to contribute to them. Yes, that's to me, something they need to yes. break up in their psyche. They're claiming they're being noble. They're claiming they're being self-sufficient, but they because there's a vulnerability in allowing someone to contribute to you as a business owner. You need to be willing to put yourself under to work with them. Yeah. Now you just hit a you just hit something yeah, very you very just important. Hit, you just hit something very very important. Entrepreneurs by by definition are very creative and strong. You can be too headstrong for your own good. In fact, one of the big reasons entrepreneurs fail is because they get because they get or fall in their own mind. So what you need to be they need to be strong. They need to be at the same time. They need to be coachable. Willing to take good strong advice. Good strong advice outside their comfort zone. So outside their comfort zone. But you just hit there. It, 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 so your point, your it, the point is the value of being coachable, and and it's not reckless. It's not anyone. It's not that's everyone. That's <clears> that's right. But it is that's finding someone you're going for. The, and I'm big on setting boundaries on time with it. Sure. I'm going to work yes. with this person for three sure. months. Yeah. And I'm going to kind of surrender to their advice and work on it. See what happens. Yes. <clears> and that's very yes. important because. You don't you don't set it for life. You set boundaries on it. Yes. Also, I want to talk about something yes. else that's important. A sin of entrepreneurs is what they bring home with them. You know, I'm amazed at especially younger people how many how many they bring home the possibility of business to their their significant other and how dangerous that is versus bringing home the wins or real crisis that are occurring. Like we're going to miss the mortgage. That's an important crisis. <laughs> but the sin of bringing home the possible ways of making money to somebody dependent on them, to me, is a little reckless and irresponsible because that's who you bring to your mentor or your business buddies. <clears throat> now, if we're going to miss mortgage, the person at home that might be dependent on you needs to know this. But yeah. uh, I'd like to talk to about it because you you learned some lessons along that, and I'm not talking about being deceptive. Yeah. I'm talking about I see this yeah. sin frequently. Younger business people go, "What well, you know? I I discussed it with my wife the possibility, and and now she's waiting for me to get results." Well, it's a possibility. It's not a plan that's executing and generating results. Why did you do that? That's stupid. You just made them feel insecure, and they're going to rag you to death. 
because until and then you won't be able to focus on actually making it happen. So would you comment on that? Yeah, it's uh, I've, yeah, it's, I've been married uh, uh, seven years. Married my my years. wife is very supportive. Oh, okay. she knows very supportive. My pluses, all my minuses. My pluses, all my minuses. And without whatever I was going into, it, without, it, whatever I was going into. It, and she says, "Hey, as long as you bring home the paycheck, I'm happy. As long as you bring home the paycheck, I'm happy." We never really discussed a whole lot of details. We never really discussed a whole lot of details. I had my business. But here's the piece, Dan. I had my business. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Now, go ahead. Now, go ahead. Well, to me, what you said there is you didn't bring home every micro possibility and every micro problem. That's right. I didn't involve her. She didn't need to be That's involved. right. I didn't involve her. She didn't, she didn't you know? need to be as long as the – But you gave her the big stroke of the, what she needs to know. So it wasn't – but that's the sin I see pretty often. Is bringing it all home, and then of course, you know, if 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 she was at the time, she was primarily at home making sure the kids didn't kill themselves, right? That's right. That exactly. Time. Yep. She was playing mother and house. You know, yep, she, she had a tougher job than you did. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? That's why I wasn't gonna bug her with my with my little day to day. Right. And so yeah. I just want to bring that up in the mix because we have people that have day jobs and people entrepreneurs. And it's hard to understand or people that, you know, someone's staying home with the kids. They're not going to understand what the entrepreneurship is unless yeah. they're in the middle of it. Exactly. Bring the wins home. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, of course, important yep. decisions that need to be made together. Yep. Make darn sure they're yep. included. So I just want to bring that up. That's, to me, another one of the sins of people working. Because the moment you go from working for someone else to working for yourself, that changes the dynamics at home. If you don't get figure that out immediately, it's going to cost you a lot. Yes. And you notice that too, because yes. you work for someone else. And so it's, oh, they're providing. And you and I know there was no security there to start with. Yep. But that's not the way often it's yep. perceived in the dynamics. Yes. In fact, well, it, let it, me see if we yes. get it. We've gotten a lot. Like couple, it, it, go ahead, Dan. What else? Uh, well, well, just one quick comment was. Uh, well, well, was one quick comment was. Uh, our day ended like it about four o'clock. Like it. It. It it four o'clock. If I was a half hour, an hour late, she'd come. But when I became an entrepreneur or was out on my own, an entrepreneur or was out on my own, it, I was going to be out to eight, yeah. nine, ten o'clock. I was going to be out to eight, nine, ten o'clock. Make the business work. So that was a transition. So that was a transition. Was there? Was there? Yeah, my quote is, I work only eight days a week, and then I take a day off. I <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. I <laughs> love it. Love it. Yeah. You know. Uh, uh, okay, so let me let me see if we have any quick questions, because yeah. I wanted to bring you on to kind of share a discussion. Is that, folks, is this somewhat useful, you know, to get idea? Any questions? He's, he's started multiple businesses. He's the guy I team up with for the crowdfunding course. How to Find the Money, he works with Wake Angels as one of his group. He volunteers with SCORE. He has a, a, a facility where all types of great people come and do training and, and work. And uh, he's probably one of the top advocates of micro-business success uh, that I know in the Triangle. So any Next questions or comments? Next to you. Yeah. No, yeah, go ahead. No, okay, go. That's good. They're they're giving thumbs up. Okay. Okay. So what well, we'll get it, but we'll also have okay. a discussion further. Uh, Dan, what's the what are the final tips? What's what's the most important thing if people because I I think you know this idea of moving from the world of structure into the world of you're accountable for all the structure is something we we must not underestimate how challenging that can be and how important it is to set up systems. Absolutely. My, I, I think my strongest recommendation would be. I think my strongest recommendation would be. If, if you're considering a startup. If you're considering a startup. Keep it simple. In other words, don't get over enamored. Or don't get over enamored. Complexity of the world of. Uh, the world you know, of. You need to keep it very simple. And what I said, I mean, look at the product or service you're offering. Look at the market that you're offering it to. And it's offering it to provide that product to that market, product to that market, uh, it, and your cost is less than what you're providing it at. Cost is less than what you're providing it at. 
And then got and it. So, so if you do that, if you can repeat that and do it sustainably, you got to do it sustainably. Not, then you've got to go to you got to try something else, or as Don Kruger likes to call it, or as Don Kruger likes to call it. So, so it's it, it, you know, it, I wish there was it, 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 I wish there was not one of the people that I work with and one of the people that I work with for a startup that I'm having. I said I wish I could just write. I said I wish I could just write on a sheet of paper and give it to you and say go do this and you'll be successful. Say go do this and you'll be successful. I like it. It's got a lot of dynamics and a lot, a lot of, of, dynamics. Each, a lot of each opportunity is unique. But if you apply it yourself, just like you are getting back to health, just like you agree back to health every week, if you're willing to go outside your comfort zone, go outside your comfort zone, figure that out. You're going to make some mistakes. Got to accept that. You got to make some mistakes. You got to find you a good mentor, and you got to be coachable. Mentor, and you can be successful. You can be very successful. Very successful. Excellent. Yeah. So again, the big thing is, like you said. Uh, set up the structures to win. Yes. Uh, set up, get good support yes. on it, move forward with it. And like you said, pick one thing where you can see, you can identify, am I winning or not? Am I making money or not? Here's Great. my expenses, including my Great. time and materials and, and account for your time as money. And then ask the question, Am I succeeding or not? And looking at those numbers. And that's the ultimate. Well, Dan, this was great. Um, they'll all wave uh, on the other side here again. I don't want to get them, uh, but uh, uh, this was great having you on. This Thank will you. be live, and then we'll Thank we'll you, start. Guys. And uh, okay. thanks so much. Right. We'll look forward Thank to you, seeing buddy. you soon, all working right. on together. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye bye.